The 4th of July is supposed to be an All-American and All-Americans celebration. But some new polling we'll share with you right now offers some fascinating and, yes, some troubling insights on our nation's deeply polarized political divide. Get this, a majority of Americans see their government as corrupt and rigged against them. Nearly half of Americans say they feel more and more like a stranger in their own country. And look at this. Nearly three in 10 Americans overall agree it may be necessary at some point soon for citizens to take up arms against the government. 45% of those who describe themselves as strong Republicans feel that way. 35% of independents do. And 21% of strong Democrats say, yes, it may be necessary soon to take up arms against their government. This poll was conducted for the University of Chicago Institute of Politics. Two of the best in the business, you see them right there, Republican Neil Newhouse and Democrat Joel Benenson collaborated on this project. They are with us live now. Uh, Neil, I want to start with you because the most alarming number in that it may be necessary to take up arms, the entire number is alarming. 28% uh, of Americans overall, but 45% of people who identify as strong Republicans, nearly half of people who identify as strong Republicans say it may be necessary to take up arms against their own government. Where does that come from? Well, I mean, these are these are stunning results. I mean, they really are. Um, when Joe and I embarked on this, I mean, we put together the questionnaire. We knew the mood of the country was was not positive, but we, it is so much worse than we thought it was. And so you look at that question on taking up arms against the government. You know, it's 45 percent of strong Republicans. But, John, it's 33 percent of NPR listeners, 26 percent of very liberals. 37% of those with guns in their households. It, it really demonstrates the extraordinary polarization in the country right now. And, and there's a, a pandemic of mistrust between Americans and their government and, and their media. Uh, and so, Joel, I was t think, reading this and thinking about the you know, disaffection we saw going back to the Perot campaign in 1992, where people thought, you know, the government didn't get them, didn't understand globalization. These findings seem to tell me people think the government is out to get them, uh, doesn't just understand them, but is somehow after them. Uh, the government is corrupt and rigged against people like me. 66% uh, of Republicans agree with that, 46% of Democrats. I generally trust our elections to be conducted fairly and accurately counted. 56% uh, of Americans agree with that, but 4 in 10 Americans overall disagree with that. And you see among Republicans, 62%, 41% uh, of indef independents. Uh, disaffection, disillusionment, what's the word for it and how do you fix it? Well, look, I, I think it has to do with partisanship in the media they consume. You know, if you look beyond some of those uh, top line numbers uh, <clears throat> and consider the fact that, you know, since the year 2000, uh, Republicans have held the White House for 12 years, uh, with Bush eight years, Trump four years, Democrats so far only 10 uh, since the beginning of this century. What are they watching and hearing that make them think that elections aren't free and fair? Uh, you know, we've had Republicans uh, control uh, the Senate a significant number of times since 2000, uh, and they are winning elections. So I really don't understand how this can be anything other than misinformation and disinformation coming from the media that they consume uh, most assiduously, uh, which tends to be Fox News and some other websites that tilt very strongly to appeal to conservative voters. And when you look at ideology on the people who say government is rigged against them, it's not only highest among conservatives, 66 percent, uh, but when you look inside the data a bit, you're going to see it's very high among white men. Uh, the group that most sociologists and analysts would say are the people who benefit the most at society. But for some reason, uh, white male conservatives feel very aggrieved. Well, Shalom, Shalom, Kahala, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shad, Bahashim, Rakakwadash. That's giving all praise to the Most High and His only begotten Son in the name of the Holy Spirit. My name is Ibar from the Prophets of Babylon camp down here in Tampa, Florida. And real quick, I want to talk on sedition. Okay, now you see this um, CNN um, news article from the, when the brothers posted it. GMS Vegas set down to 144K. That a nation is divided, man. Okay, a nation is divided, and these people, you know, they're they're showing you these polls that people are you know ready to take arms against the government. You know, people say that they feel like strangers in their own country. You know, people feeling alienated, and they said that it's majority of these you know white so-called white you know males. You know, these Edomite man. You know, who who really, you know, this is their kingdom. 
And the reason why they feel like this is because they're losing their kingdom. They're losing their power. The scripture says that he, um, he, he, the Lord has appointed him a, 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 um, I'm going to have to grab it. But let's go here. Let's go, I'm going to grab definition for this word. Sedition. It says, in, it says sedition, incitement of discon, discontent or rebellion against a government. Any action, especially in speech or writing, promoting such discontent or rebellion. Um, and then it says rebellious disorder. And as in, that's what you see in amongst these American people. Okay, they're saying how their government has failed them and, and, and how they're about to, you know, pretty much take off arms against them. And they see that happening in the far near future, which is what? A, a, really a civil war. And the Lord told us that these wars was going to come. Okay. So it says, 2nd Ezra chapter 15, verse 14. Woe to the world and to them that dwell therein, for the sword and the destruction draw off nigh. And one people shall stand up and fight against another people with swords in their hands. That sword is talking about guns, weapons. You know, and it could be any kind of weapon. It, it could be an actual sword. It could be a knife. It could be a screwdriver. It could be a hammer. You know, some of these things are very easily, um, a, a very easily accessible, like a hammer. You know, a damn a switchblade. You know, what I'm saying if somebody will come across your head, or stab you up real quick. That's the times we coming into, man. You know, these people are these people. These people have you know, war in their hearts. It says, for there shall be sedition among men, meaning these men. You know, these people, you know, they're getting ready to go against the government, man. You know, they're, they're saying the hell with this place. They're not going to regard their kings nor their princes, man. It says, in invading one another, they shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. And if anything, January 6th did, which they've been going, talking about this thing, which just got Trump might get locked up. But they, they've been talking about it or whatever. And what that did was that, uh, 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 you know, um, started a precedent. Where at any moment a government building can be, you know, flooded and attacked, man. So now anytime something happens, you know, or, or they do something, you know, controversial on one of these government buildings, they're fencing it up. Why? Because they know that these people are not are not going to regard their lives, man. They they're not going to regard their authority anymore. Pretty soon these people are going to just lose it. Hey, they say when when you have nothing to lose, you lose it. Verse 17: A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able, for because of their pride the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed. And men shall be afraid. You see, it's gonna get bad out here. And a many shall a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. So this is all going to lead up until, you know, ultimately, you know, um, all hell breaking loose, man. Okay, uh, uh, you know, shit hitting the fan. Okay, that this is what this all lead lead lead, lead leads up to. This is what it all leads up to, man. Okay, I'm going to grab that scripture that you saw. This is the book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 17. But he, knowing their thoughts, un and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself shall is brought to desolation, and every house divided against itself falleth. So there you go, man. This is this, 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 this America. You know, this kingdom, this nation is divided, man. And it's divided against itself. So that's going to bring it, what, to desolation. Okay, it's going to cause it to fall. It says, if Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because ye say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub. So if Satan, you know, you Edomites, these Edomites are going against each other. Or they feel like they're, they're, they're against their government. How can this kingdom stand, man? Okay, this kingdom is bound to fall, and this is why you see, you know, the, the, the uh, times that, that that we are coming into where all hell is going to break loose, man. And the government, and you, you 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 don't think the government knows this, man? You don't think the government knows that you people are, you know, planning on trying to, you know, overtake them? That's why this guy Biden talking about you're going to have to have some missiles and this and that and the third to take down the U.S. government. So lock you, you know. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 12. It says, therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them, woe, which means destruction, unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So these Edomites see that their time is up, man. Okay? They see that their time is up, and because of that, they, they are afraid. They are, they are afraid, and, you know, they're, they're starting to get antsy. 
And what's going to happen is they're going to get violent, man. You know? Like I did a video the other last night of this, um, the shooting that happened, you know? The shooting that happened. And it turns out how the shooting, you know, it turns out how, how the shooting or whatever, it was, um, it was on the, there, there, there was, it was live streaming it live streaming the news on youtube or whatever and people were commenting and people just kept on saying how it was fake and mk ultra and, and, and nobody's re re really be re really believing it anymore man okay why because hey this man is uh falling man and his lies his witchcraft ain't nobody falling for it no more man okay job chapter 14 verse 5 seeing his days are determined the number of his months are with thee Thou has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. So these Edomites, you know, they, they, they you know, they expecting to be in rulership forever. They expecting to be in power forever. But the Lord said, what? He, 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 he have set him bounds that he cannot pass, man. Okay? And that's what it's all about. It's about Jacob and Esau, man. Esau is upset. Okay, Esau is upset. This is the book of Second Ezra, chapter 6, verse 7. It says, Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? So this world that we know is coming to an end. Whether you believe it or not, it's coming to an end. And there's going to be a new world established. And that world is going to be the kingdom of heaven for the Israelite men. Okay, the so-called white man that that's complaining and that's so upset right now. He's upset because he's losing his kingdom. And it's very, very, very evident. You know, he sees it. You know, it says... And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. There you go. So, hey amen. Esau is, is the end of this world. So what we're seeing is the end of this world. And Esau seeing the end of his world. That's why he's upset. He said, And Jacob is the is the beginning of it that followeth, man. Okay. I'm just going, going in the spirit. You know, this is a uh, second, First Corinthians chapter seven, verse thirty-one. It says, "And they that use this world as not abusing this world, for the fashion of this world passeth away." So this world, as we know it, is going to pass away, man. It's not going to last much longer. It's going to pass away, and then we're going to know, you know, that's you know, amen. So lucky we see the key to heaven being established you're gonna know that the men of the lord have been telling you it was right and you're gonna see these edomites brought low and that's all it is they seeing the end of their kingdom they're seeing that their their time um run short they're seeing that they're running out of time you know that they, they're seeing this man and they're feeling it and that's a scary feeling so that's what's causing a lot of tension you know a lot of racial division because jake's silly man jake is in their own mind jake is you know don't know what's going on so they're trying to be cool with esau but esau like yo like he really upset. Yeah. It's lucky I keep on yawning. That's the damn devil. But, um, yeah, man. Esau is really upset. So the fashion of this world, this world as we know it, is going to pass away, man. The Lord's going to bring, you know, do away with this place and bring something new out of this. Okay. And in that Esau, in this, in this world we're living in, this society that we're living in, it's going to be brought low. It's going to be destroyed. It's going to be, you know, turned upside down. All right. Through the spirit of your whole body, y'all shine. Okay, let me grab that real quick. Because the whole the, the, this whole game of them acting like they're the most, you know, superior and the greatest people on earth, that, 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 that's been put to an end, man. That's been put to an end. And devils have been found out. It says, um, 2 Ezra chapter 6, verse 27. It says, For evil shall be put out, and deceit shall be quenched. As for faith, it shall flourish, corruption shall be overcome, and the truth which have been so long without fruit shall be declared. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing the truth being declared in this earth, and because of that, these people are losing it, man. These people are losing it, okay? Let me grab this real quick. This is Second Ezra, chapter 6, verse 24. It says, At that time... Shall friends fight one against another like enemies? So there you go, man. People that was once friends, people that you know, people that you was having the barbecue with last night for Fourth of July. In a couple months, y'all is gonna be in the front yard, you know, wrestling and tussling for the last, you know, canned good or whatever, man. You know, for whatever reason, y'all gonna be in the last water bottle, you know, whatever. The last, whatever reason, y'all gonna be, you know, at odds. Okay, your neighbor that you been popping fireworks with and 
um, celebrating the holidays with, hey, that, hey, that, hey, hey, all that's going to be dead, man. It says, verse 20, 24, at that time shall friends fight one against another like enemies, and the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein. The springs of the fountain shall stand still, and the three hours they shall not run. Whosoever, whatsoever remaineth from all these that I have told thee shall escape and see my salvation and the end of your world. So we're seeing the end of this world, man. We, 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 are, we are witnessing the, the beginning of the end of this world, and we pray to ultimately endure to the end, to see the end of this place, man. And Esau is upset because he's already seen the end of his place. He's seeing the end of his world, too. You know, he's seeing his power and his, you know, his respect and his reverence, you know, diminishing. So now he's going to, you know, what, turn back to that sword and start slaughtering, man. Turn back into the devil he is. He ain't got to pretend to be an angel no more because y'all don't believe he's the angel no more anyways. So he's going to come back to straight slaughtering, man. All right, so with that being said, I'm going to say Shalom, Kwame, Shirala. I pray that this was edifying to the whole for elect. And, uh, yeah, man, we we coming in some very, very turbulent times. I just posted a clip.